Hi, welcome to Believe the Bible. If you're saved today, church is just not enough. There are five things I'd like to go over that I think are very important that should be a part of the Christian life. And here they are. Number one, Bible study. Number two, prayer. Number three, fellowship. Number four, good works. And number five, witnessing. When it comes to Bible study, there's only one way of doing it, and that's the way God tells us to. He commands us to. It's a command when he says, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All God's word is truth. It's just dividing the truth correctly to have us understand it in its context. If we start mixing Israel's program with the body of Christ, that would be a wrong way of interpretation and a wrong way to study. Number two, prayer. First Thessalonians 5.17 says, pray without ceasing. And there's so much more about prayer. There are over 500 verses in the Bible dealing with prayer. Prayer is important. It shows our reliance and dependence on God. Not to change God necessarily, but to change us. Number three, fellowship. We should have fellowship, and this is part of the importance of where church comes in. Second Thessalonians 1.3 says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you toward each other aboundeth. That's awesome. Notice the words, faith groweth exceedingly, and charity of every one of you toward each other aboundeth. You can't do that if you don't get together, if you don't get to church and have fellowship with other believers. That's necessary. Last verse in this category, Ephesians 1.15, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love unto all the saints. I know, it's kind of hard to believe sometimes that saints actually are supposed to love one another the way, the way it goes, uh, especially on YouTube, where there's so much difference in, in doctrine and uh, interpretation that it, it's all over the place. How could you say you love them if they totally disagree with you? But uh, it can be difficult. But we have to remember that once we are saved by the correct gospel, that Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood, was buried, and rose again when we believe that but then yet put our trust in that for the forgiveness of our sins and that alone then we are saved we have to remember that that is the basis of our christian faith everything coming from that stemming from after that is unfortunately a lot of misinterpretation of understanding of how we should walk in christ but it's something that we can all learn and grow together <laughs> if we have uh, a unity and a humble heart and a willing spirit to uh, even change our minds. I, I know I've changed my mind in a lot of things in my 45 years of being saved. Number four, good works. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, and we often use these verses as a salvation message that tell us how we're saved. It doesn't tell what salvation is, what the gospel is, but it tells what happened. It says, for by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And this is the verse I want to get to. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I emphasize good works are not a requirement for salvation. And if you hear that enough, you almost think that I don't believe that you should do any good works at all. Well, that's further from the truth. Grace teaches us that we should live godly and righteous in this world and to keep from the ungodliness and unrighteousness. Yes, that's how we should uh, be living. We should be presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, understanding that our temple is the Holy Spirit. Yes, we should do good works, but good works are not required to get saved in any shape or form or at any time. Some people think that they're not required to get saved, but they're required to be saved, and that couldn't be further from the truth. But if we look at this verse again, we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. There should be no question that the believer should be doing good works for the right motive unto Christ for his sake. And the last one, the toughest one, that 99.99, I don't know how many nines would be after that, people who are called believers do not do. And that is sharing the gospel, witnessing for Christ, being an ambassador. Colossians 1 through 28 says, Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known 
what is the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach. And what does he do? Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect, which is complete, in Christ Jesus. Now, I know you know these five things. The question is, are you doing them? We all skip things, don't we, in our lives, in our Christian life. Oh, yeah, you know, I should be praying some more. You know, I wish I had an opportunity to witness to that guy. So I know what you're thinking. Yeah, boring video. <laughs> I, do, I know all of these things, you know. But really, if you're honest with yourself, you got to figure that, you know, all five of these things are probably not something you're doing every week. Are you praying? <laughs> praying more than just at the table? Uh, are you studying God's Word, rightly divided the way He said to? Are you having fellowship with other believers? Are you witnessing for the Lord? And there's so many different ways to, to do that today. And of course, let's not forget good works. Are we doing things for the Lord, for His purpose to bring Him glory? Thanks for your time. You have a good day.